Well, hello and welcome back to math. We're going to review a little bit more on equivalent ratios because I think we, some of us are still struggling a little bit. Um, if you recall, equivalent ratios are when we have a ratio and we need to see if they have the same value, the same value. So, for example, what I'm going to need for you to do today is I'm going to need for you to take out either your math notes if you've been keeping notes or um, some paper, and I need for you to write these examples down because it's going to help you, hint, hint, it's going to help you on your math assignment for today. So what I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to go ahead and write down the ratio 6 to 8. And what I want to know is I want you to see if you can find the equivalent ratio that would be 24 to what? I want these two to be equivalent ratios. How could we solve that? Go ahead and see if you can come up with an answer. There's only one answer that works. Some of us are going to do um, what we would call the Wonder Woman, where we go from the first number to the first number and the second number to the second number. Remember, in order to make equivalent ratios, we have to multiply by the same number. Well, I can already see I multiply 6 times 4, to get 24. So that means in order for this to be e e in order for that to be equivalent, I have to multiply this by the same number. So I would do 8 times 4, and so I have made equivalent ratios. Some of you prefer to take that ratio and you would rather do it this way, which is perfectly fine. A ratio can be written like this. And we had this, and we're trying to find out this. Well, we do the same thing. We still are going to find out that this is multiplying by 4, and we still would say that this is multiplying by 4. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you another one, and I want to see if you can find the integer that will make this equivalent. All right, so here is the ratio, 2 to 6. I would like for you to find the integer that would make these two equivalent ratios. First number to first number, second to number. I don't know what the first number is multiplying by because I don't have an integer here. I do know that if I multiplied 6 times 10, that's going to be 60. In order for this to be equivalent, I'm going to multiply by the same number. So the equivalent ratio would be 20 to 60. Once again, if you wanted to do it this way, you sure could, 2 to 6, 2 to 6, something to 60, something to 60, multiplied on the bottom times 10, multiplied the same thing on the top. Okay, equivalent ratios. We're going to multiply or divide by the exact number. I guess we should say exact same number. All right, so I'll put those in your notes, and I have a little bit more for your notes. All right, so in our notes, I want you to go ahead and you're going to draw a line like this, and you're going to write yes on one side and no on the other. I'm going to give you two ratios, and if they are equivalent, I want you to write them on the yes side, and if they are not equivalent, I want you to put them on the no side. All right, so let me give you the first one. All right, here's your first one. One to four and 5 to 20. Are these ratios equivalent? If they are, put them on the yes side. If they're not, put them on the no side. Let's see. First number to first number. 1 times 5 is 5. Let's see if this is true. 4 times 5 is 20. Ah, that is yes. So I would write over here, 1 to 4, and 5 to 20. All right, let's try another one. All right, 2 to 3, and 8 to 15. Okay, we're going to take the first number of the ratio and the second number. 2 times what equals 8? 2 times 4. 
3 times no, oh, 3 times 4 is not 15. Okay, 3 times 5. These numbers are not the same, so this is going to be on my no side. All right, we're going to give you one more to try. All right, let's look at the one I have here. I have 28 to 16 and 7 to 4. Are these equivalent? First number to first number, second number to second number. Hmm. Hmm. Looks like I have the smaller ratio on this side, so if I went backwards, I could multiply 7 times something and then 4 times something. Or, if I wanted to, I guess I could start here, and in order to be equivalent ratios, this has to be the same number, whether I multiply or divide. Let's see what happens if I would divide. I think 28 divided by 4 is 7, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. Ah, so this worked. Now, if I wanted to change things, I could also solve this problem by going this direction, saying 4 times 4 is 16, 7 times 4 is 28. So once again, I still have the same number, so this would go on my yes side. Okay, so you're going to have to do something like this today as well, finding equivalent ratios, telling me if they are yes or no. The last thing we're going to do is a story problem. All right, so let's read the story. The story says a florist uses 15 lilies per flower arrangement. How many lilies would the florist use to create six identical arrangements? Well, I have to find my ratio. This was a trick one. This one's a trick one. The ratio says 15 lilies per flower arrangement. I have to know what per means. This is actually my ratio. So my ratio is 15 lilies. I'm going to make my ratio. And it's per flower arrangement. Per means one. So I'm going to say one arrangement. Now, in your notes, I'm going to ask you to write this. You do not have to write the problem, but I want you to write the example of how we're solving it. All right, so we're going to, we want to find an equivalent ratio in order to make this true. Um, obviously, if I have lilies on top, I need to keep the lilies on top over here, arrangements on bottom, and I need to keep arrangement on the bottom here. All right, so let's go back to our story, and it said that we have 15 lilies per arrangement. How many lilies would the florist use to create, oh, here we go, here's our other number, six identical arrangements. Six. Where's the number six going to go? It's going to go with arrangements. So now we have to find the missing number. Hmm. One times six is six. So, on the top, if I multiply the same thing, 15 times 6. All right, so 15 times 6 is 90. So, when it says how many lilies, my answer would be 90 lilies. Okay, let's try one that might be a little bit easier and doesn't have the per in here. Let's move down to this one. All right, it says the public library has volunteers shelve books after they have been returned. When Lisa arrives to volunteer, there are five non-fiction books for every nine fiction books. If there are 36 fiction books to shelve, then how many non-fiction books need to be shelved? I apologize that my ink looks like ran out on my printer. Let's find my ratio. I see the ratio right here. It says five non-fiction books for every nine fiction books. So there's my ratio. Let's go ahead and write my ratio down. Let's do 5, and let's go ahead and just put NF here for nonfiction, and we'll put 9 fiction books. So for every 5 nonfiction books, I have 9 fiction, 5 to 9. 
All right, so we're going to um, put our ratio over here. We're going to keep the same labels, nonfiction on top and fiction on the bottom. If we look at the story, it says if there are 36 fiction books, okay, 36 fiction books. Hmm, 36, is that going to go on to the top or the bottom? Uh, fiction is on the bottom, so I'm going to put it down here. And remember, we're trying to make an equivalent ratio. So if I went from 9 fiction books to 36, what did I multiply by? You are correct. I multiplied by 4. So I have to do the same thing on the top. 5 times 4, and my answer would be 20. 20 nonfiction books. Okay, make sure you have these two these examples written down in your notes or paper. They will help you on your Google Slides that you have. You have three of them to do. Once again, if you are struggling and having a hard time, please reach out to your teacher so that they can help you solve these problems. All right, have a great rest of your day.